Hey everyone, my name is Simsy. How are you all doing? Welcome back to some more <laughs> AFL 23. Here today on the channel, we have episode 7 of my Brisbane Lions management career series. Here today, we have a match against the Geelong Cats to kick, th kick things off at the Gabba. <laughs> so, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. We're coming to the tail end of the season, as it were. Finals is just around the corner, and we're in within a shot of the minor premiership as well. But here we go at the Gabba, round 19 against the Cats. We sit top of the league, and it's going to be interesting to see who actually makes finals by the end of it. We have had a fair few game crashes over the last episode, so hopefully... We don't have one against the Cats here today. Also, as we're sort of getting towards the end of the season, it's probably not a bad idea to do some contract negotiations. Now that the team's in form, we've made finals, we might be winning the minor premiership. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of players that will even want to stick around at the club because we're a winning club now, and even the players around the fringes won't want to leave or any of our big stars. So we will dive into some contract negotiations as well. But here we go, match against the Cats, a team that obviously will want to try and make the grand final this year. Let's go. In our forward 50, trying to create something here now. Just handballs all around the place. How's he got uh, that out? Come on. Going to be another ball up. Brisbane Lions, aggressive in our forward 50 early on. McInerney in the ruck, wins it, only as far as McCarthy. And... Coincidentally, the former Cat pounces. You kind of forget that he had a stint of his career at the Cats. Brisbane up by a goal. Lockie O'Neill looking to bring it in. I keep on saying O'Neill. I don't know why. Lockie Neal. <laughs> oh, good tackle. Rain in there looking to pivot. What's going on here? He's floating around, and that's a terrible kick. Not 15 play on. The Cats going down the midfield. Big punch. Berry now. Finds Bailey. And has a golden opportunity to put Brisbane further in front. Looking for Brisbane second. Zach Bailey steps up and goes back. Bang. Brisbane look likely to increase their lead further. Thanks to that man there, Zach Bailey. What a player he has become. Whoa. Wait, we've had a game crash. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. In the middle of the game, what? All right, I think there's been a save corruption or something because we played like 15 matches in a row. Fine. The last five have been crashes. So I'm just going to have to sim now. This is really annoying. Um... We're going to win the minor premiership, more than likely. We are definitely going to make finals. Like, we're mathematically there. So, I don't know if it's worth playing these last five games all the way for 20 minutes and then for the, just to crash again. Maybe there's a save corruption. Um, I don't believe there's been an update, but that might have changed things. So, we're sitting at 18 wins in a row. Look, if I keep on going, I probably could go undefeated. But, look, this is quite frankly annoying me so I think we're just going to sim all the way until we get to finals and then hopefully now that we're in a final get to a final series um things might change we'll see so we'll just go through and skip we go on and beat the Suns there 27 21 but um we're still dealing with sort of the rocky launch week I suppose match against the Dockers a team we beat earlier on I do, I, we could have gone invincible. I don't know if I care overly that much that if we potentially lose it, we did to the Dockers. So 19 games in a row, we eventually, probably realistically, <laughs> should have lost a game here and there. It's not like there's an achievement. Uh, there was an achievement for AFL Evo 2 that, um, uh, what was it, win three flags back to back to back? <laughs> I wish that achievement was in this game. Or maybe going for a full season undefeated. Oh, we actually lost two now. And I wonder if our list will change up a bit now that we've got injury problems because injuries seem to be bugged if you manually play everything. So at the moment, we're still nailed on to winning the minor premiership. Sydney move up to second place with the Ds in third. Uh, let's skip this one and sim against Collingwood as well. 
as the Cats and the Dockers might not make finals. We go on and beat the Pies down at Marvel Stadium. Still sitting in first on 80 points. Yeah, there's just no way that Sydney's going to catch us. And Melbourne are even further down the pack. Uh, Goals-wise, Joe Danaher's up there with 33. 23 for Bailey. 22 for Cameron Zorko as well. So it's not like any of our players are going to lose to Coleman because of us simming now. Hopper with the disposals, which is interesting. Uh, match against the Saints now. And... I just want to show the ladder just in case it changes. So Melbourne, Sydney, the Saints, Power, Essendon, Collingwood, Carlton are probably going to make finals by the look of it. We go on and beat the Saints at the Gabba by a measly five, five points. And I think that's it. I think Geelong don't make finals. Carlton does. North Melbourne miss out as well. And that's it. Yep, we've got the free agency period now before finals. And let's dive into some contract negotiations. So, I would say that Geelong are pretty unlucky to miss out there. Richmond in 18th. So, we end the first season of this career save. And I'm just trying to go through all the watch list and stuff. They might have, have they changed? Like, you can do trades before the finals, maybe? It's usually after, in the Christmas period, thereabout. But we'll dive into some contract negotiations, I suppose. So, Sydney, Melbourne, and the Saints have a spare chance, which is interesting. So I think we play the Saints. If we're first, we've placed fourth. Yeah, that's, that's how that works. But uh, a lot of Victorian teams there. Three interstate. Yep, and we play... And we play the Saints. Okay, let's do some contract negotiations. So, I'm more than happy to re-sign Zorko for another year. AFL is a little bit different. Players can play well into their older ages. I feel like they drop off more in FIFA and stuff. So we're going to give Zorko a two-year deal extension. Now, I don't really want to increase the um, the value and increase the amount we're pay playing some of these players. If we can sort of keep them the same and get them on longer contracts, I'd like that more. So someone like Lerman, um, so he's rejected because he's not happy. So that's a shame because we haven't played him much this season. He's got low morale. All right, so forwards li line-wise, so Hipwood and Gunston. So we'll probably try and give Gunston another year, 88 rated. I wonder like how much his overall rating will go down by. Two-year deals a lot because he's 30. He'll be 33. He's going to accept the deal. As long as we sort of keep them at that evaluation. So maybe it was actually better when the morale was neutral earlier in the season to sign players. Hey, you live, you learn. Um, so Hipwood hasn't played much. I'd be curious to know his morale. I want to try and sign him up for a longer contract. My thinking was if the team's playing well, it doesn't really matter if you're not getting to the starting lineup because you're at a winning club. Um, so a three-year deal for Hipwood... Still haven't been overly too convinced with him. And he's accepted accepted that deal, which is good. Alright, so a player like Tom Fullerton might not accept that, which is a shame. No, he's not. So you do. So now you actually have to rotate your team quite a bit if you want to get them on contracts if you leave it this late. So whose contract is expiring next year? We can worry about other... Um, Seasons when we get to it. Because it's 2023. So I think we... Oh God, we want to definitely re-sign Dunks. He's on a lot of money, though. 750000 Okay. Maybe we go with two, then. Nice. Yeah, thankfully, we put it on 
normal salary cap and um, stuff. Oh, he wants three, actually. Um, because I would imagine this could get quite annoying. Okay, so who else have we got here? Lockie Neal, we want to try and re-sign. 94 rated. Uh, we want to try and keep him at the club as long as possible. But it looks like... Yeah, the thing is, because we haven't had that many injured players, I don't really mind if we lose players to, like, Cockatoo and a couple of others, because we haven't been playing them anyway. All right, Rich, 89 rated still. He, we're going to have to try and re-sign him. Who we've got McKenna, haven't really been playing. Lester as well. So let's give Rich another one year if he's interested. He's not. So let's give him another deal. Pick 7, 2008. So he's accepted, so he's going to spend the rest of his career here. Uh, McDonald, we actually got in. I'd be, I don't really mind if he goes. We're probably going to have a lot of salary cap to move around with. So Leicester, a player we haven't really played much this year, but he's a valuable player. The thing is, if we sign them up, we can still look to rotate some of these players we're simply not u using. Like, We probably could get some decent picks for someone like Leicester, who's been a little bit injury-prone in this in real life, and we haven't really played with him overly too much. Yeah, so the boys that have like 24, 25 ends on their contract, I think we'll keep. Uh, who else? We've got Gardner here. Let's give him a new deal. Doesn't have that high of a potential, though. So let's give him a new deal. We do want to try and least... I didn't really mention this because... Um, we haven't really got to the trade period, but I do want to try and keep it semi-reasonable and sensible. Like, we, I don't really want to bring, like, Tom Hawkins and Jeremy Cameron and, I don't know, Tex Walker and, like, redo the entire forward line and bring in Jack Revolt, because I think they'd be just, like, unrealistic. Um, so, let's just try and get some of these deals done. All right, well... I think that's enough contract negotiation. All the players that I really care about, your Dunks, your Riches, and your Neils, um, and your Riches, players that are first team. All the all the first team players have got new contracts, basically. Everyone else is around the interchange and the bench. Um, I do believe if they don't want to leave, they can get re-signed. You don't have to manually go and do it, but I wouldn't actually mind opening up the salary cap because I quite... I've been using a very lean list. We haven't really needed a huge bloated squad because we just haven't been having injuries. But maybe that will change next season if uh, a new update comes out or whatever. But anyway, we've got a massive opportunity now. First round of finals, round one. We face the St. Kilda States, uh, States <laughs> Saints at the Gabba with an opportunity to launch us into the prelims. But no matter if we do lose... We have a second chance. We're going to be hosting the Saints at the Gabba on the 1st of September. It's going to be a good one. Back in the finals for the first time in a, a while. Ross Lions Saints. Ross the boss. Going to be trying to upset the Lions at the Gabba. After winning the minor premiership. Which is a huge, huge honour for us. And... The boys know it's a massive opportunity, so let's go out there. I want to be aggressive and tenacious. Let's get the ball rolling. Dunks on a brand new contract. Fires it straight to a spoil. Cameron with the handball. Zorko finds Cameron. Zorko back from his injury as well, by the way. And he's missed the last six games of the season. It's good to see him now back into the side. But Charlie Cameron whips out the motorbike and goes insane. One goal up in the first quarter. The Saints trying to... What? Trying to bring it out for the back. Danaher with a spoil. Good handball in the end. Bailey smashes it between the big sticks. And in the first final series of this career series, the Lions go two goals in front. McInerney with the grab. Dunkley hits the footy quick. Oh, what a grab by Joe Danaher. It's absolutely eccentric football here at the Gabba. And Joe Danaher has a golden opportunity with the set shot to make it three goals for the Lions. He shoots. He scores. <laughs> and it's a goal for Big Joe. Bang. Good. Good stuff. 
Still in the first quarter. Zorko play. This is Neil actually who plays on. Trying to find Cam Rayner. He finds him. Rayner probably does have the distance, but he's going to try and centralize it to Joe. And he gets the grab. Joe plays on quickly. Doesn't need to go back for the set shot. Four goals. Just trying to put on the pressure and play some quick footy against the Saints. Another grab there. Lions looking for the fifth. Molly Meldrum tearing his hair out in despair. What was that? What? A deliberate rush behind. I've never seen that. The AI is doing this weird thing with the handballs now. McCarthy steps up for number five. Gets the goal. And the Saints do not. They do not look up for this one with McCarthy putting his name on the score sheet. Easy goal. Second quarter now. Bailey gets it. He's going to take his shot. And in front of an empty Gabba, Bailey gets his goal. The Lions, six goals in front. Bailey again. Great ball in. Great mark. And of course, a great conversion. He isn't going to miss from here. And he doesn't. Seven goals in a row for the Lions. And Zorko with the grab. Finds McCarthy. He's going to go back and try and slot his second for Brisbane's eighth. Still on the hardest difficulty, of course. Nothing we can do about it. But hopefully, when I start a new save on a, a new patch or version, things will be a little bit harder. Unfortunately, due to the d game's release um, craziness, this series has been a little bit chalked. Third quarter now. I don't know what the Saints are doing, but we're just sort of handballing around them. Rayner. I don't know how he found Joe Danaher in the pocket. It's kind of ridiculous. Goes around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> shouldn't have done that. Holding the ball in the end. <sighs> and he shouldn't have done that anyway. I don't know if we deserve that one. Bailey bangs it in. Just wanted to play on quick. Okay, third quarter. So we've gotten past half time at least. Uh, we crashed against the Cats at half time. The main issue I was having is that at the end of matches, when the save would cash, maybe something to do with the cloud saves, I don't know. The game would tend to crash. That that was like that, that originally started in this career series for the first couple of games. Then it got fixed for like 15 in a row. Then it happened again. Um, and then we started having crashes like midway through. So hopefully, after sitting here for 20 minutes now, as the fourth quarter is about to sound out, we haven't been in vain in playing this. We're going to have to simulate it to get to the prelim. Who, I don't know who we're going to be against. And that's it. Brisbane Lions uh, win by 12 goals to zip. 75-point victory at the Gabba. A couple different animations as well because it is a final series. And Lockie Neal with the celebration. And we've got a bunch of achievements there, which is great. And we made it all the way to the end. It didn't crash, which I'm happy with. So, I don't know. Um... It was like, yeah, the end of the season it was not working, but in finals it's working fine. So I don't think it's a save corruption. I don't know anymore. But here we go. We have the prelim final against the Melbourne Football Club. The Ds we've been drawn against. So they stay, they are currently in our way of a AFL grand final. Now, for some reason, I can't actually see. Like, AFL Evo 2 did have a good viewing of the final eight bracket. So I actually don't know, even if we win this, who we're going to be coming up against. Uh, the team will slightly rotate. I think Dunkley's in a new position than what he was playing the majority... Yeah, he was, was playing the majority of this series. Because of those injuries, we've had to rotate. It's because we sim those games. Um, for whatever reason... Uh, simming gave us injuries while manually playing them didn't for whatever reason. 
I don't even know. But we've beaten Melbourne every single time we've played them this season. Home and away. And we're going to face them at the Gabba. The only way they could stop us if they were to uh, turn out the lights <laughs> in this 3 p.m. fixture. But here we go. Lockie Neal eyeing up Max Gorm and Melbourne in the prelim of this AFL 23 Brisbane Lions management career series. We have to beat Melbourne to get to that. The pinnacle of football. The grand final. Can we do it? Boys, I'm so proud of you. Let's have a win. Gorn wins the tap out. Ashcroft wins it only as far as Zorko, who can probably go back and kick this one, coming back from his injury. He has the distance, you'd think. Bombs it to full forward. Oh, Danaher. Picks it up on the line. Plays on quickly. And Joe scores the first goal of the prelim. Bang. Joe again receiving a deadly ball. On a slight angle here. Yeah, it's just because he's a left footer. He's really on the wrong side. Alright, we go again here now. Danaher. Bangs it. Scoring two, and it's a brilliant brace by Big Joe. Gunston has a shot at goal now. Oh, I should have. Oh, hang on, hang on. McCluggage? I couldn't get it out. I probably should have had a shot, but it was a little bit far out for Jack. I thought we had a bit of a an open player there. That's my stuff up. Neil. Oh my god, just chopped down. McAnooney? What? I don't know what Melbourne were doing there. But we're three goals in front at the first term. Second quarter now. Melbourne. Spray it to the wing. Weird handball back. Fritch. Cozzy Pickett. Goes straight to him. Brisbane trying to get it out. Zach Bailey makes the unselfish decision of dropping back. McInerney charges forward. Look at this. It's a sea of maroon as Dunkley goes for goal and scores a wicked goal in this final series. It's an unlikely goal scorer. Dunks from midfield. Bang. Bailey trying to find Gunston. Oh, we just... Managed to sneak a mark there as the siren goes for half time. Could go around the body. Might be more accurate from here as Jack Gunston steps up and unfortunately shanks it. Fourth quarter now. That third quarter was incredibly boring. Nothing much happened. Bailey now has a mark to make it 40 points against the D's, and he does. Just outscoring the opposition is how we're winning this series. Well, let's be honest, they're not really attacking for whatever reason. And when they do attack, it's pretty toothless. Oh, as I say that, they get a goal here now. Five goals the difference. Probably too late as Clayton Oliver puts his name on the score sheet. I wonder if they had a problem with coding blonde hair or something. Because a lot of players like uh, Wiedemann and Clayton Oliver, they have like like a lot lighter hair than... Yeah, I don't know. Is it just me? But anyway, full-time siren goes. 46-7. The Lions win by six points. And have booked themselves... In their first AFL Grand Final, Grand Final, under Chris Fagan, the D's shell shocked as they're out for another year, and the boys celebrate because they know what they've done. They've won the minor premiership, and now they could win a flag. So forty-six seven. Danaher with two, Dunkley Bailey, and we've made the final. 
And who's it going to be against? You're going to have to stay tuned for episode 8 coming out tomorrow. We're going to have the AFL Grand Final. Hopefully, Brisbane can go and win it. But unfortunately, on that note, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. My apologies for ending it on a cliffhanger. But hey, if you want to see more from me, check out the videos on screen. Thank you so much for watching. And we're going to be wrapping up Season 1 of the Brisbane Lions Career Save. All right, guys. Cheers. I'll see you soon.